Good morning, Barry Victory Center. We're in the middle of getting awakened. Hallelujah. We're having an awakening conference. It's awesome. We have Pastor Brian and Pastor Derek uh, here the, today, and it's going to be an awesome day. We got a morning session here at uh, now, and then one at one, and then one at six. Uh, so we have three sessions. Uh, it's just going to, and we have a, we're going to have a little lunch here uh, for everybody. So it's a, uh, it's going to be a great time, and we're just going to get more and more excited in the presence of the Lord. We're going to worship Jesus, so come into his presence, and let's, let's get up and shake off any fatigue and come into the presence of the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, let's worship. We take a stand, our fear must go. We're moving forward in the Holy Ghost. We take a stand, it's our destiny. We claim dominion for the land of free. We bring to me for the father of lies. We take a stand, there is no compromise. The heavens hush as all will see. Releasing a great awakening, we declare His anointing flows across the nation of Canada. We speak releasing of angelic hosts from sea to shining sea. We declare the word of God stands a salvation for Canada. Jesus Christ is King From sea to shine to sea Thank you, Jesus Love you, God, hallelujah Let's sing it again We take a stand, our fear must go Moving forward in the Holy Ghost We take a stand, it's our destiny We claim dominion for the land of the free We break agreement with the Father of lies We take a stand, there is no compromise The heavens hush as all will see The Lord's releasing a great awakening we declare His anointing flows across the nation of Canada. We speak releasing all angelic hosts from sea to shining sea. We declare the word of God stands a foundation for Canada. We declare Jesus Christ is King. From sea to shine to sea. We stand on guard for thee. No, it's Jesus that makes you free. We stand on guard for thee. No, it's Jesus that makes you free. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Let's declare this over our nation this morning. Hallelujah. We take a stand, our fear must go. We're moving forward in the Holy Ghost. We take a stand, it's our destiny. We claim dominion for the land of the free. We break agreement with the father of lies. We take a stand, there is no compromise. The heavens hush as all will see. 
Across the nation of Canada We speak releasing of angelic hosts From sea to shine to sea We declare the word of our stance A foundation for Canada We declare Jesus Christ is King From sea to shine to sea Thank you, Jesus. You are so good, Father. You are so good. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His mercy is new every morning. He is so good. We declare it this morning in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are good and your mercy endures forever. Well, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Good and your mercy endures forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation. Good. You are good all the time. 
you are good and your mercy endures forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. You are good. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Praise you, God. He is so good this morning. Praise you, Jesus. The God of creation then took our place. The God of redemption and opened the way. The day you gave your life, I'm seen to failure in our eyes. I'm but the stone that rolled away. And when you walked out of that grave and left this day, with grace why do you look for the living among the grave and Jesus lives all the earth sing now the power of death has been broken this changes everything thank you Jesus praise you Father the God of perfection became sin. The God of creation changed everything. The day you gave your life and seen the failure in our eyes. And but the storm rolled away as you walked out of that grave and left this place. Why do you look for the living among the grave? And Jesus lives all the earth's savior. The power of death doesn't broken. And this change is everything. Because you live, our hope begins. Because you let mm, our song will never end. Because you let mm, now we can live. This change is everything. This change is everything. Because you let mm, our hope begins. Because you. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship you, Jesus. We love you, oh God. Praise you, Jesus. We 
You are awesome. Hallelujah. You are awesome, Father. We worship you, Jesus. Praise your name, O oh God. You are awesome, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you that we're free in you, Jesus. We are free, Father, in your spirit. Freedom, Jesus. Praise you, God. Step out of the shadows, step out of the grave, break into the wild and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces, graces waiting for you. That's like the weight has been lifted, graces. Waiting and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Come out of the dark, and just as you are, into the fullness of his love. And for the spirit is here, let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Bring all of your burdens. Bring all of your scars. Come back to communion. Come back to the stars. Run into wide open spaces, graces waiting for you. That's like the weight has been lifted, graces waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. And where the Spirit the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom, come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of his love, for the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom, praise you Jesus. There's freedom. Praise you, Jesus. Chains will fall. Prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole. Hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. The chains will fall. Prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lies when all hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. You go the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Just like the weight has been lifted, graces I'm waiting. Oh, dance like the weight has been lifted, 
so good father you're so good praise you jesus hallelujah your love awakens us father praise you jesus us and by the cross you came and broke them down mm, you broke them down and there were chains around us and by your grace we are no longer bound mm, no longer bound mm, you called me out of the grave you called me into the light you called my name and then my heart came alive mm, your love is greater are coming back to life, mm, come back to life. Mm, hear the song awaken, and all creation singing, we're alive, mm, cause you're alive. Mm, you called me out of the grave, you called me into the light, in my name, and then my heart came alive. Mm, your love is greater, can hold us down we shout it out we're alive you're alive and what a love we found death can hold us down we shout it out we're alive you're alive and what a love we found death can hold us down we shout it out we're alive you're alive praise you jesus your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Awake it, 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 awake it
are good and I have death because you are good and thou shalt because you are good, you are good to me with the cry of praise will proclaim that you are good, that you are good in the sun or rain. My life celebrates that you are good, you are good. With a cry of praise, my heart will proclaim you are good, you are good. In the sun or rain, my life celebrates. You are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good and you are good with me and I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good and you are good with me. Praise you, Jesus, we love you, Lord. You are awesome. Praise you, Father God. Let your spirit sweep over this place, Father. We worship you. Receive our worship today. Receive our worship, Lord. We love you, Father, King of kings and Lord of lords. We love you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've seen what you can do. Oh God of wonders, your power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure, mm, you will do again. Because there's no prison walls that you can break through, no mountain you can move. All things are possible And there's no broken body you can't raise No soul that you can't save All things are possible The darkest night You can light it up You can light it up overcome you already won God of revival you rose in victory and now you see seated forever on the throne so why should my heart and fear would you I will trust in you alone. There's no prison walls that you can break through, no mountain you can move. All things are possible. There's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can save. All things are possible. The darkest night, you can light it up. You can light it up. Oh God of revival, let hope arise. Let it overcome.
come awake in this city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Well, every struggle will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Oh, come awake in this city. And come awake in this city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Well, every struggle will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. The dark is You got it all. Change at the ground. Oh God, I'm free. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Father, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful morning. We thank you for the manifestation of your presence. We thank you, Lord, that we are looking to demonstration. We are looking for your manifestation. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for Pastor Brian. We thank you, Lord, for this season we're in, Thanks. that you're waking the, awakening your church into the third great awakening. We give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. So much is happening in the presence of the Lord. We want to welcome the pastors that came in this morning. Hallelujah. See Dan over there. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus, Pastor Steve over here. Anybody else here f just this morning for the first time? Yeah, they were there last night. <laughs> John and Jennifer were here last night. Past oh, yeah, Pastor Sill and Dennis are here. So it's good to see you guys. Uh, pastoring, they're pastors of our churches. Hallelujah. Praise God. We give you glory. <laughs> give you glory, Lord, for our pastors. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for what he's going to do this morning. Well, we're going to, we're going to receive an offering this morning. We want, to, we want to be able to bless Pastor Brian and Pastor, Pastor Derek a little bit, so we're going to receive an offering. Brian, he drove from, uh, he drove from Atlantic Canada, hallelujah, in, in February, <laughs> you know, and, you know, so we want to, we want to make sure he's blessed. So we're going to, we're going to give an offering uh, to the speakers today, so let's just give in faith, let's believe God. And let's just bless them. Amen. Oh, by the way, <laughs> if you want to e-transfer, it's right on the envelope. If you're online and you want to give, it's at info at buryvictory.org for your e-transfer. Or you can go on our webpage, buryvictory, uh, buryvictory.org, and just give by PayPal that way if you want to do that, if you didn't bring a check, just so you know. I run to you, my heart's in your hands now. I'm not afraid with you by my side. I feel your love, it's burning inside me, deep down. You draw me close whenever I reach out. You'll always be the strength of my love. I know your hand will always defend me, deep down, deep down. Well, even when I walk through a fire, it won't be burned. Set my feet upon your word, and no, no love will never fail. This I know now, deep down, deep, deep down. 
You're calling me to fully surrender. I trust in you and lay down my pride. I hear your voice resounding within me. Deep down, deep down. Well, even when I walk through fire and won't be heard, I said I'll be upon your word. I know your love will never fail. Yes, I know now. Deep down, mm, well, deep, deep down. I stand on your truth You are my hope and I'll hold on to you The spirit is with you and I feel you now Deep down Well, even when I walk through fire Even when I walk through fire Even when I walk through fire It won't be burned I'll set my feet upon your Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good to see everybody this morning. I want to just share a few little things that I know about Pastor Brian. He's more than just a pastor. He, uh, he's a preacher, and he's a starter. He, he's, he's started many churches. I don't know how many churches in, in the Maritimes in, uh, in the Atlantic Canada, but he preaches at a place called The Barn, and... Uh, <laughs> And he does that twice a week, and then he has his own church, and then he preaches all the time everywhere else. Well known in the Maritimes as an evangelist, as a, as a healing evangelist, as all kinds of things. But he is an apostle. He has ap- he's, a, he's an ap- apostolic uh, uh, future voice that's going to shake, shake this nation, I believe. He's got a, he's got a great word. He's, he's a man of faith. And uh, praise God. Hallelujah. So he's going to share with us, Pastor, Pastor Brian, Evangelist Brian, Apostolic Leader Brian, whatever, whatever you are, you, you, you come, Brian. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God is good. Come on, let's give Jesus all he's the not praise. A- Amen. Keep Praise talking. God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God is good. You might have to turn this down in a little bit, but we'll be all right. Amen. How do we know Jesus is alive and well? Glory to God. I want to thank Pastor Paul and Pastor Debbie for having me at this conference. I tell you what, what a message last night. If you you got to get that inside your heart and inside your spirit. It was just amazing. You know, you know what I realized last night? I need to listen to people preach. You know, instead of preaching all the time, I need to sit down and listen to people preach. I felt so refreshed and so revived in my spirit. Why? Because you know what? We can't always be given out without also receiving. I almost convinced myself last night to drive down here at least once a month just to hear a sermon. You know, you know, like I think it'd be well worth it for, my, for the ministry God has given me. Amen? But God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think according to the power that's already at work on the inside of us. Amen? How many you know we're living in the greatest days of the greatest time of the greatest moment in our life? You know what? The the best is not behind us. It is on the doorstep 
of the greatest awakening we're about to see to hit the nation of Canada in ways we cannot even imagine. Glory to God. I am telling you, if you're going to give God a praise offering, right now would be about the right time to give God all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for what he's done and what he's going to do in our lives in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. Woo! Glory to Jesus. I am telling you, we're living in exciting times. Two years ago, I was maybe a little bit depressed, but I'm getting excited now. Amen. This whole thing, I don't know what this whole thing was about, but anyway, whatever it's about, it's coming to an end. It's coming to a quick end here in the next, in the next little while. You know, God's got something to say. I said God's got something to say. You know, even, even though, you know, a few things bothered me about everything that's going on. Number one, I thought the church was in better states than what it was. I was quite, it, it was quite a blow to see the spirit of fear creep in so strongly and so widely across the body of Christ. When, when, when we've been preaching faith, I've been preaching faith for 30 years. I thought people had more faith than what I saw. I, I really did. I, I'm just being totally honest and transparent with you. We need to get back to the place of faith. The one thing in Luke chapter 18 and verse 8, Jesus said, Will I find faith when I come back on the earth? I want to tell you something on my watch. You'll find it. Glory to God. Because if I'm here, we're going to keep believing. We're going to keep trusting. We're going to keep expecting that God is going to do supernatural things. I am telling you, He is not done. But when you go to Isaiah chapter 52 and you begin to read, and God says to shake off those things off of your life, we got to shake off depression. We got to shake off oppression. We got to shake off COVID. We got to shake off every principality, every power of rule of the darkness over our lives. And we need to wake up. Amen. Everybody say, wake up. Wake up. Say it again. Wake up. wake up. One more time. Wake up. Wake up. Now, it's going to be really annoying and just say, go beep, 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 beep. The alarm's gone off. Amen. Hasn't it gone off? Beep, 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 beep. Nobody could hear the alarm, so we needed the trucks all in reverse so we could hear the beep. They're going to have to reverse them out of there because I think they're all stuck. Glory to Jesus. But God is an amazing God. I said God is an amazing God. He is going to move exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. And I am excited. I don't know, not evident many times, but anyway. I am. I got way more energy now than I did the last time I came here. I lost half a person. Glory to God. I lost, I lost a teenager. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> God is so good. And uh, we, we, we are looking forward to what God has done, but what God is going to do. And uh, I do preach at the worship barn. I'm ready for revival in the Maritimes. I got a 30,000 square foot open span building waiting to fill up. Amen. I'm telling you, we could fit 5,000 people in there. It's the largest conference center in Atlantic Canada right now. And it's just ready with a huge stage. And when revival does break out, we are going to see the glory of God. I am telling you. People are trying to change this on the political side, but this is not a, going to be a political thing. This is going to change in the church. No, let, let, let me get that straight. It's going to change in your life. Then it's going to change in the church. Then it's going to change in the community. Then the community is going to change. going to change the province. Then the province is going to change. going to change the nation. But it first starts with me, and it first starts with you. And it started about with us waking up to what God has planned and purposed to destiny in our life. I've preached more throughout COVID. I preach five times a week. It's conference every week in New Brunswick for me. Glory to God. I tell you what, we preach at the worship barn twice a week. I preach in my church twice a week. I got a house church in Sussex. I preach that. And then wherever else God wants to send me. I'm just kind of preaching everywhere anyway. But anyway, Jesus is good. And it's time to preach Jesus. You know, at first when all this happened, I preached everything but Jesus. Got mad, got frustrated, hated politicians. I'm telling you, I mean, I got, I got really angry, really bitter. And I said, God, I can't stay saved on this, on this walk. I said, we got to change things up here because I need to be. Because God is coming to awaken something that is, a, it's, it's, we're being awakened now. We're not coming into an awakening. We're being woken up 
right now. Now, some people are grumpy wakers, right? God been trying to wake you up. You've been getting very grumpy. God wants you to be, you, look at your neighbor and say, time to be a morning person. Right? No time for you to be grumpy anymore. Isaiah 52 in the Message Bible, it says this. Message Bible, Isaiah 52. Wake up, wake up. Pull on your boots, Zion. Dress up in your Sunday best, Jerusalem, holy city. Those who want no part of God have been called out. Well, they surely have. Glory to God. There are people who don't want anything to do with God. And let me tell you something. Some people thinking this was a new norm. You are absolutely wrong. This is not a new norm. I'm telling you what. We are going into something supernatural, not something natural. I tell you what. We are going to move into something that God has called us to. And I, I, I tell you what. Pajama Coffee Church is not what Jesus had intended. He intended for us to gather together the assembly of ourselves. He wants a corporate anointing. The devil's afraid of a corporate anointing. He's afraid of the amalgamation of the anointings together. Why? Because we one of us will put a thousand to flight, and two of us will put ten thousand to flight, and he is fearing and tremble. So stop them from singing, stop them from preaching, stop them from gathering. I'm telling you what, it's time to wake up to what God has intended and purpose for in our lives. Wake up, wake up, put on your Sunday best. A lot of people, I tell you what, there's going to be, there is a great falling away, even though some people don't think they are, there is. There's a shift that happens. A big shift that happens. But listen, brush off the dust and get to your feet. We heard last night, just get moving, Joshua. Just get moving. Brush off the dust. You got to shake some stuff off. You don't get the right. Let me tell you something. A lot of people fighting for their rights, but there's some things as a Christian you don't have a right to. You don't have a right to be offended. You do have the right to remain silent, but nobody uses that one. But <laughs> if you think people are keeping silent, just turn on Facebook. <laughs> Brush, us, brush off the dust and get to your feet, captive Jerusalem. Throw off your chains, captive daughter of Zion. God says we were sold for nothing. We we're being bought back for nothing. Again, the master God says early on, my people went to Egypt and live in a strangers in the land. And the, at, at the other end, Assyria oppressed them. And now, what have I here? God's decree. My people are hauled off again for no reason at all. Tyrants on the warpath, whooping it up day after day. Incessantly, my reputation blackened. But now, it's time. That my people know. I am telling you, we are coming into a time that his people are going to know who he is. And then he says, and what I am made of. Yes, that I have something to say. Here I am. When we wake up, God is going to have something to say. And I've been saying this in my church and at the worship bar now for a few weeks. God is about to step back into time. We are coming into a Kairos moment in our lives. I tell you what, he used to be, listen to me, Jesus used to be in the volumes of the book, but all of a sudden he stepped into time. But he stepped into time more than when he was born of a virgin. He stepped into time with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He stepped into time with Moses. He stepped into time in the lion's den. He stepped into time with Paul. And I am telling you, when the oppressor thinks he has us against our backs against the wall, that's when 
God is about to step right back into time. And I tell you, in 2022, we're about to see God roll out of the pages of the book and step back into existence of a brand new awakening of the glory of God that's about to hit the face of this planet. Glory to Jesus. Can somebody shout amen? We need to awaken to the fact that mo- this moment of time, he has something to say. And what he has to say has nothing to do with your opinion. Has nothing to do with our politics. But it has everything to do with his justice. Whew. God is going to step into time. I truly believe we need to awaken to the fact we are stepping into a kairos moment, meaning, the word kairos meaning a moment of maximum opportunity. I really believe there's going to be maximum amount of opportunity for people to come to Jesus like they never did. Let me tell you, the whole world has shaken and there's nothing to rely on. Now it's time for Isaiah 61. Arise and shine for the light has come and the glory of our God has risen upon us. Everybody say maximum opportunity. I wish some of you believed you were just as effective effective with the anointing as you are with viruses. Glory to God. I'm about to pass something out here. Or you're about to get infected with the glory and the goodness of God. I am contagious. You shouldn't step too close to me. What saw me could jump on you. It has a little bit more of it than a six-foot reach. I'd be very careful. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Christians are supposed to be infectious. Amen. I tell you what, I love what Pastor said about spit. He said it was about the DNA. Glory to God. But in Romans chapter 8, it says the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. It dwells in me and it shall quicken my mortal body. There's a DNA on the inside of me. And I want to tell you, I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, not I that live, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And the sons of God, the Bible says that the earth is groaning and it's moaning for the manifestation of the sons of God, of the same anointing that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. The word kairos means a moment when change is possible. Change is possible. Look at your neighbor say, change is possible. But then what I like about the kairos moment more than any other definition It's a moment when all things will come together and align. Through my prayer, through what this conference, God says, he said, Brian, he says, the devil thought you, thought he had you. The enemy thought he set us back, but God was only setting us up. A lot of people think this is a setback. It's not a setback. It's a setup for a comeback. <laughs> I am telling you what. We, we haven't been set back. We've just been set up. Because now there is going to be a voice. There's a clarion call that is going to roar through this land. I tell you what, the devil thought he had Jesus done and whipped and done away with. He thought it was a setback to the message of Jesus. But it was only a setup because God didn't count forward. He counted backwards. And on the last day, on the third day, he rose again on the third day victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you realize, but you are already... Why are we afraid to die when we're already dead? If you ever read in the newspaper that Pastor Brian died, don't believe them. They're lying to you. I don't plan on dying. I died on May 
22, 1985. The old nature, the old man that I have had everlasting life from that day. I've got eternal life from that day. My body might not be here, but my existence is still as sure and secure as it's ever been. I have not gone to a grave. I've gone to a graduation. Thank you, Jesus. And I have gone into the place of which that I have practiced to be in since I got born again. So if you don't die, there ain't no fear. That's why Paul could say, what can man do to me? Why should I be afraid? Glory to God. It is the Kairos moment of God we need to wake up to. And while we're waking up to Kairos, we need to awaken to faith again. Not just the faith we preach, but a faith we live. Many people, I've heard a lot of good faith preaching, but I need to see some good faith living. The Bible says, people say, well, pastor, you know, this and that. Well, the Bible says he's never seen the righteous forsaken or at sea begging for bread. The Bible says, I'm blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed in the field, blessed in the basket. Everything my hands touch and come upon shall be blessed. I tell you what, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I don't might not know where it's coming from, but ladies and gentlemen, it is coming. And God is going to make supernatural provision. And I tell you what, if you stood for what you believe and what you trust in, there is a promise of supernatural provision for your life. And my God, not, not Pastor Paul's God, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. If you want to quote anybody, you should quote Jesus. Luke chapter 18. I'm just getting started here. I'm excited, just in case you didn't know. The other day I was praying. I do that a little bit. I got to the verse of scripture that says everything that can be shaken will be shaken. I think everything's being shaken. But anytime there's an earthquake, there's always warning signs of a tsunami. This thing's been shaken for two years. It has made a vacuum, but that vacuum might reside in the water, but the water's coming back. And if a lot of people think that what we had ain't coming back, it's coming back, but it's coming back with a vengeance. It's coming back with force, because when it shakes, I tell you what, the earth shakes, it makes a suction. It just pulls everything back. But I want to tell you something. I am so ready for the tsunami of God to hit my life in ways it never hit it before. I tell you what, if the devil thought he was going to make me quit, he just made me hungry. I don't know about you, but I just got hungry and all this. You know what? I, was, I didn't know I was malnourished, but I am getting well fed right now. And I am not looking to anybody to feed me. And I tell you what I'm being fed on. God said, he said, son, he says, you know how to praise, but you've got no idea how to worship. And he says, you're coming back to a place of worship. And listen, they wrote a song in the 90s. It says, when the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come, I'm coming, I'm telling you what, when everything else is gone, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. But let me tell you something, worshipers are going to arise and revival. Let me tell you something, There's, you've never had a worship service in church. You had praise services. We don't know what worship is. Because the reason I know we haven't worshiped is because we haven't changed. And once you get alone in the Shekinah glory of God, something's coming back up different. But worship has nothing to do with your efforts. Worship has everything to do with your ability to, you, to humble yourself and bow down before the presence of an almighty king. Because when he comes, he's going to make himself known. And every day, God's made me practice bowing down and worshiping him. And people say, well, why do you bow down? It's the only reference I know to worship in the whole Bible. When we bow down, 
He stands up. When we stand up, he waits. But every day, because everything I knew in the last two years faded away. But I said to God, I am awakening to mercy. I bow myself before his presence in this room now. But let me tell you, worship is not about you speaking. Worship is a lot about you listening. Just reach in, Pastor. Ain't going to get an amen anywhere else. I might as well amen me. If I don't believe it, nobody else should either. Glory to God. But I am awakening. Listen, the Bible says, actually, I want to go to something. Can I go something? All right, hold on. Because we're in a Kairos moment. Pastor made reference to a verse of scripture last night that whew, hold on. I knew this was going to happen to me today. But it's okay. Do you know before their second Chronicles chapter seven and verse fourteen? Their second Chronicles chapter seven, verse one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. But the only verse of scripture I ever hear preached in church is Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. But you know what? Verse one to verse thirteen shows what kind of condition should church should be in before it humbles themselves and seeks its face. And the first thirteen verses are so awesomely powerful. And verse fourteen is just in case. It's an in case scripture. It's not even I'm I'm telling you, it's an in case in case you need this, this could happen. It really is. Second Chronicles. So after First Chronicles, that's after Kings, chapter seven. It says this now when Solomon had made a end of praying. I love prayer meetings, but I wish sometimes we could make an end of praying. And not leave and let God respond. We come to church to pray. We give God everything. Tell him everything. Show him everything and leave on him before he has a time to respond. I thought, you know what, I've read my Bible. I don't know how many times. I thought the only time fire came down from heaven was when Elijah called it down. I didn't know in Second Chronicles because I only, I, I, I only went back to verse 14 because sometimes we can be so fixated on one scripture in the Bible that we've heard so many times we don't, read the, we don't read everything else before. We just automatically, our minds are reading it, but we're just fixating on one thing. And here it says, and the fire of God fell down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the, glo and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their face to the ground upon the pavement and worship and praise the Lord saying for he is good his mercy endured forever then the kings and all the people offered sacrifice before God and King Solomon offered the sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen and that was an offering and 120,000 sheep I got some sheep I'd offer anyway <laughs> <laughs> I just tease you. Don't be so serious. Amen. <laughs> My glory to God. Where was I? Ah, uh, yeah. And the priests waited on their offices, and the Levites also with instruments of music to the Lord and David king, and made 
to praise the Lord because the mercy endured forever. When David praised by their ministry and the priests sounded the trumpets before them and all of Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon hallowed the middle of the court and was before the house of the Lord. And there he offered burnt offering and the fat for peace offering because of the brazen altar. And Solomon had made, was not able to be received the burnt offering and the meat offering and the fat. Also at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days and all of Israel with him, every great congregation from the entering, amen, well, however you say that word, unto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly and they kept, they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. And on the three and twenty day, the seventh month, he went to the people away from their tents, glad and merry in their hearts for the good that the Lord had showed unto David and Solomon and Israel his people. But thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came in Solomon's heart to make it, make in the house of the Lord. And in his own house he profitably effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard your prayer. I have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. I will shut up the heavens and there will be no rain, and I will command the locusts to devour the land and send the pestilence among the people, and if my people, which are called by my name. So everybody goes there. Listen to this. When we finish praying, fire comes down. But fire didn't come down. And I, I asked God, I said, God, why isn't the fire and the awakening happening in our lives? He says, because I need to have something to fall on. And a lot of people, let me tell you something, they prepared everything. There was a sacrifice. And I believe that God says, and then in Romans it says, present yourself therefore a holy sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable service. And I said, God, if you got nothing to fall on, I said, I will lay myself down on the altar of sacrifice. If you need something to hit with fire, because I've prayed, we've prayed, we've prayed, we've prayed, but nobody's giving God anything to fall on. I tell you what, he is going to fall with fire and I'm about to get lit up from my toes right down to the crown of my head. Why? Because God, I am offering my myself to you fall afresh and anew are you ready to offer yourself to God the only way to keep a fire burning is you got to add wood if there's no wood there's no fire who is the fire what will God consume so let me tell you what I offered him I said God would your holy fire consume my pride consume my offense consume my hurt Consume my pain, consume my disappointment, consume my religious concepts. God, with your fire, consume that which is not of you in my life. God, I don't want to live a life that is not worthy of being holy and acceptable unto you. But I found the church wants God to do everything without offering God anything to fall on. And I am telling you, we are coming in today that if you offer God something to fall on with fire, he will fall with the fire of his presence. But it's time for us to shake those things off and we need to bring them to God. We got to stop running to everybody else and bring everything to God. I tell you what, I brought it. You know what? A lot of people talk about how church hurt them, but I, uh, how pastors hurt them. But I, I tell you what, I offered a lot of people that day to God. I gave them a whole whack of them. I said, God, everything consume with fire. But listen, there is going to be fire before there's glory. Once the fire came, the glory fell in the house. You can't enter after it falls. You need to be there before it falls. When you can't see it, don't think. Be present. And the thing God has showed me through all this in an awakening is be present. You know, the song goes, Even if I don't see it, you're moving. Even if I can't feel it, you're moving. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're moving. Even when I don't feel it, you're moving. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. 
So the one thing I'm making sure about in my life right now, because I'm going to live, I tell you what, I was created for revival. I am not a church attender by any means. If I knew this was it, I'd say, Jesus, I'm ready. Crank up the rapture. I'm ready to go. This can't be it. But I believe that the Puritan prophecy is about to happen in Canada when he said Canada is reserved for an end time movement that will usher in the return of the Lord Jesus Christ that was given in 1776. I tell you what, then Smith Wigglesworth said Canada is going to have a revival, but it will, it will, it will, it will reside for a period of time, but then it'll come back ten times greater than it ever was, and you will see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how many know when we prophesy, we prophesy in part, we see in part, we hear in part. He said 50 years, but a generation is absolutely 80 years. And if you're looking back at the prophecy of Smith Wigglesworth, in the 20s, we are about to embark. We're in the 20s. Glory to God. A great awakening happened in the 1920s, and it will happen in the 2020s as well. We are celebrating the 100th year, but I am telling you, it's about to break out. The Spanish flu came in 1918, and then there was awakening of John G. Lake, Amy C. Simple McPherson, Katrin Kuhlman. I'm telling you what, the great healing awakening is about to come after this pandemic. They're going to call it to an end. They're going to shout it. And then there's going to be a revival in the land. Woo! Come on, somebody! I've been watching this. You wanted to be born with the apostles. I tell you what, the apostles are looking at Jesus and saying, why couldn't we be born now? <laughs> They're going to see something we have never seen. Whew. When the fire falls, the glory will come. Be present. The response to the glory is worship. Everybody has thought that worship brings the glory. The respond to glory is worship. You're not going to find true worship unless there's true glory that fills the place. Right now, I'm only practicing, bowing down, humbling myself. Worship is coming. We are going to have a reason to worship and give God thanks and glory for everything he is going to do. You will not wonder. I wonder if everybody's going to worship. They'll hit the ground and hit the floor and worship will be present because God is about throughout a Kairos moment of time right now. He's about to step into our present reality. So what did they do? Listen, this is the formula, if there is a formula. Seeking God leads to presenting an offering. Presenting an offering leads to fire that brings the glory, that the respond is worship, that leads to more offering, that leads to a time of fire. Listen, it's presenting fire, glory, worship. Now these guys, they were stupid. They said, if the first offering brought this kind of fire, bring more offering. <laughs> if what I present God, present to God brings fire, if I want more fire, present more to God. I made up my mind in 2022 I'd be a God chaser. Not that I think I can catch God, but you know what? It's like playing hide and go seek with your three or four year old. You hide till you want to be found. Then you stick out your foot. Then you want them to see. I'm here, right? Because you don't want the, 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 the thing about playing hide and go seek with them is not for you to stay hidden from them. It is for the anticipation of the embrace of being found. And when you seek after God, and he start, that's why he told Moses, he said, I'm going to hide you in the cliff of the rock, and then I'll show you all my backside. Because God is about to show up, but I am going to seek and chase after him. And when he begins to make himself known, he 
is going to embrace his bride like he's never embraced it before. I don't know if you're ready for the encounter with God, but 1994 of the Toronto outpouring was just a drop in the bucket to what God is going to do in the 20s of this millennium. I am telling you by the prophetic voice of God that the greatest days are ahead of you. They're nowhere near behind you. So they get give him more offering. And then the priest, they tried to save face, right? Because they weren't in the temple when the glory fell. And they couldn't get in. So they said, well, we're not in there. Maybe we should gather the troops together and begin to praise God. It looks like we're earning our pay. <laughs> anyway, so they started having a celebration. But then, after it's all done, the Lord appears to Solomon. He says to Solomon, I've heard your chastening. I heard your prayer. And God says, Solomon, I've chosen this one. I don't know what you're waiting to hear, but in St. John, New Brunswick, I'm waiting to hear God say, I've chosen. I hope you're waiting for him to say that in Barrie, Ontario, I've chosen this place to show my glory. God shows up to tell Solomon he's chosen the place. I believe God is going to show up and say, I've chosen Canada. And then, if you want healing for the nation, not before, because everybody thinks that verse 14 is going to bring the glory. But in the middle of the glory, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. It's not a get to glory moment. It's in a glory moment. We need to be in the glory to fulfill Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. That's why you can have all the repentant meetings you want. If there is no glory, it's not what Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 was written all about. It's got to come fi offerings, fire, glory, glory, worship. Offering, fire, glory, worship, fire, offering, fire, glory. Worship. So if there is no fire, what are you waiting to present God with? I'm going to tell you something. If there's no fire, it's not God's fault. He can't burn what is not there. I'm so done at being about me. And if all the church of tomorrow is is a skinny preacher with tight jeans, Lord have mercy. <laughs> we need help. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. He says, many people, listen, if you're a young minister, listen to me. Don't look for a platform. Don't look to have a platform. Look to be a voice. Everybody's seeking a platform, and God's looking for somebody to be a voice. I don't need a platform. I, I got a voice. And I actually heard him in the beginning of this year. He says, there is a prophetic word that is yet, not, is yet to be heard that is going to come from an unprecedented place. It's not going to be from where you thought it should come from. He said, turn your ear open because I am going to raise up a new generation of prophets like you have never seen before in your life. It's not going to be the known. It's going to be the unknown that is going to step into the moment of time because it's going to be seen that it's going to be about God and it's not going to be about me and it's not going to be about you, but it's going to be about the manifestation of the glory of God in our lives and in our being. I don't know about you, but I am so anticipating Anticipating the glorious, glorious glory of God in my life. And I hope you are ready. I can tell you something. I don't know if everybody will be awake.
Lord, I know I'm not worthy. I'm already out. had enough of the superficial church. We need the supernatural church. You can tell me how many butts you put in the seats, but you show me how many lives are in here. I can get the biggest men's group on the face of the planet just by a heart and back of one. Then I'll come to breakfast. And lunch. Today we stay for the night service. <laughs> I'm not looking for that in the church. I was never even built for that. It's all right. I hope I didn't offend you. But I'm going to have days ahead of my time. I'm going to see the lame to walk and the blind to see and the deaf to hear the dumb to talk and the dead to be raised. I've seen in 90 days preaching in Fredericton 100 miracles. In 90 days, I had over 1.2 miracles a day. I guess you've got to break it up mathematically. We have seen, and we're not John G. Lake, we're not three single saints, but the same anointing. And we got to stop fixating on the name and not the name. And fixate on the name that's above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. You know, every cancer cell is stuffed up in this room. But I, I, I understood why some people don't get healed. Not because God doesn't want them to. But we had, sometimes... In healing, we need to receive. We need to receive by faith. And you know, most Christians want to be healed because they're afraid to die. Fear is never the motive behind which you need to be healed. The reason you need to be healed is because God is not done with you yet, and there is still a destiny and a purpose for your life. And you can't die. You can't want to be healed because you're afraid to die. Fear is never the motive by which God operates to cause healing in your body. But when you begin to be in His presence as a worshiper and you know what God has intended for you to do and what He is going to move you to, then healing is birthed out of purpose and destiny, not out of fear and torment. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15, it says, For they have been subject to bondage because of, of death, because of fear. And I am telling what I have not received a spirit of Romans chapter 8 receive a spirit of bondage again of the fear I've received the spirit of adoption by which I cry out Abba Father and I want to tell you some people say well Pastor Brian did believe God wants to heal everybody I believe everybody should be healed every, I believe everybody's the will of God for every single person to be healed in the name of Jesus I believe that And when you go see a doctor and they give you a bad report, you got to shut down fear immediately. They told me two years ago I had a high cholesterol, type 2 diabetes. I had high blood pressure. I told, some of you don't talk to your doctor. You need to talk back. You sit there and go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. She says, you're a diabetic. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I said, I'm not a diabetic. She says, your blood sugars are 25. I said, I don't care what my blood sugars are. I'm not a diabetic. She says, I'm going to prescribe you something. I said, no, you're not. She says, I'm not. And I said, you're not marking it into my file because you're not canceling my life insurance. So I said, I said, I said, I said, you put your pin away and put my file away. And I said, I'm coming back in three months. I said, we can set the appointment now and we'll see if I'm a diabetic. <laughs> well, I went back in three months. I gave them blood, more blood, and then she wasn't satisfied with that, so it needed to have more blood because she didn't like being wrong. 
because I'm not diabetic. I'm not who you say I am. I am who he says I am. And he said, by his stripes, I am healed. See, they tried to make me an epileptic. I'm not an epileptic. I haven't taken a seizure or a pill in 37 years of my life. They tried to tell me I had throat cancer, but Jesus is a great healer. They tried to tell me, Al Corain tried to tell me that I'd have to get my esophagus stretched every six months. I told him, I said, I'm going to get a second opinion. He said, I'm the specialist. He says, where are you getting a second opinion? I said, from a better specialist than you. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? I said, your name might be Al Corain, but I know Al Shaddai. <laughs> And I said, I got to go talk to El Shaddai because there's no way on God's green earth you're making me go through this every six months to stretch my esophagus so I get food down. I went and saw El Shaddai. I tell you what, the all-sufficient one, the almighty God, that is more than enough. And I tell you what, it has been 11 years and I have not had to go see El Karay ever again. I don't have that acid reflux in my body anymore because it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It matters what Jesus says and Jesus has the final say about it. You know what? Some of you can get healed right now. I'm saying right now. You begin to praise God about it. There is an anointing to heal right now in Jesus' mighty name. Woo! Anybody here? With an esophagus problem, you should stand right now. Acid reflux. Anybody got heartburn? Ha! Come up here. Ele mando break it, take it, mando brand, kiss it, mando brand, kiss it, mando brand. Ele brand, kiss it, then mando brand, do brand. Oh, the brand, kiss it, then mando brand, kiss it, go brand, keep bracket in the brand. Ha ha, brand, kiss it, come on, she, then man, na 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 na. I command that acid reflux to settle down in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to go right now. I command that esophagus to be heat. Oh, man, in on no so called mondo, brande, ke manda brande, in the brande, in the brande, in the brande, in the brande. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, Yeshua Mashiach, the great physician. Yeah, that's done in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor for what God is doing, what God is doing. Come on, let's, let's just stand together, give Jesus all the worship and all the praise. I know I've preached long. Uh, praise God. But I wasn't as long as the guy from last night, so I think I'm still okay. I'm just teasing. Amen. Uh, you know what Acadians like to do? They like to have fun. We really do. So if you take us too serious, you're really going to be disappointed. Hallelujah. Whew. Just lift up your hands to heaven. Let's just believe healing virtue to fall and operate. Over your body. I'm going to give you a diagnosis. You're going to live and not die. Hallelujah. I really feel a strong healing anointing. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for life abundantly. I just heard you'll finish the race with grace. You'll run in the race with grace. You will run. He has graced you to run this race. Whew. In Jesus' mighty name.
In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Father God. You're moving mightily and powerfully. Oh, but I stay seated in my day. Expect big. Expect big. Big is about to happen. <laughs> in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, but I stay seated in my day. I don't know what this means, but I keep seeing steel beams just rising up, just rising up, just rising up. And I really believe that God is building, constructing, fitting. Things are going to fit together and jointly. Every joint is going to supply. I believe physically. I believe spiritually. I believe ministry-wise. Everything is going to be connected in its right place. There is a season of connection for you. Oh, but I think it, but I think. <laughs> Divine connections are coming to you. You won't have to go running for them. They'll run to you. There's some great attachments coming your way. Father, we thank you for the life of God that is flowing and operating and functioning in these bodies in the name of Jesus. Every level normal in Jesus' mighty name. I, I, I believe people's iron, somebody with the iron, blood deficiency in their iron is going up in Jesus' mighty name. I believe that. Is there anybody here that your iron needs to go up? Can you, just, can you just raise your hand? I just felt that iron in your blood. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just thank you right now, Father God, that iron, iron deficiency is a thing of the past in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name, you just receive it. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Father. Just excuse me for one second. I'm just going to move here. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we just thank you. Ah, yeah, be made well, be made healed in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for it, Father God. We receive it in Jesus' name. We just thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Ramando brende que se le man aha el mundo brende que brande que brende que brake de breke de brande. Ah, mahaha so he 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 uh, he's all on you, Jesus. We thank you for the full manifestation, God. There's been a lot of standing on your word. But the full manifestation, God, in Jesus' mighty name. <sighs> Ora brasto solo brande in the branda da da brasto sotto do do so e la aria scala la muscia la la macho lo lo la macho antara da branda da da branda e le brasto sotto do do branda da da breste se le le macho tutto do branda da da branda e le braste se le le mando branda da da brasto sotto do fracite ma se le le manda da Hallelujah. 
In Jesus name 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 we thank you father God life is being released But the presence of Jesus is here, and the Holy Spirit is very strong. Many have teared you down. But I heard the Spirit of God said He's about to pick you up and place you in the place of position that He has designed and destined for your life. There is a lift. The spirit of lift is in your life. It's going to lift you to a new level. It's going to lift you into a new place. It's going to lift you into a new purpose and it's going to lift you through a new destiny. God says, shake everything off that your adversary has tried to bring up against you. And actually, there is nothing. Listen, listen to this. God wants you to know this. There is nothing hindering you. So take no hindrance upon you. Pastor. You know, some people think that what we've been through might not have been God sent, but it was God allowed. And He is waking us up. It's in the middle of adversity that we rise above. Out of the ashes we will. Fire. Fire, God. Fire. Oh, let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. There's miracles happening all over this place right now.
Hara brashtishata ashama shashate. He de vrende de vrande de de vrende de vrande de 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 de vrande Praise you, Lord. Let's just be still in the presence of the Lord. This is worship. Thank you for your presence. For the great morning that you've given us, we give you praise that it will continue all day. We hunger for you, Lord, and we thank you for changing us on the inside. As we fellowship over lunch, Lord, we praise you that you will continue to minister to us, that we won't break out of it, that we'll stay in your presence. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Well, I'm going to ask those that are helping us with the